okay what is going on guys welcome today once again to my youtube channel welcome to our very first video on java and today we're going to be looking at starting up with java that means it's going to be an introductory video starting up with java java is a very popular programming language and today this video would be for those who have intermediate knowledge in programming and are looking to go into the java programming right java programming language or those who do not even have any program programming experience and wants to go into the java programming we are going to be looking at the basic theories around java and we'll be setting up our java environment all right let's get this okay so in this tutorial we are going to be looking at this particular set of objectives the first objective we have is to introduce Java programming language. Okay, now the Java programming language is a it's an object-oriented language. Eh? More on that later on what object-oriented means, but it's an object-oriented programming language that runs on billions of devices. Okay, it is class-based. Okay, running on billions of on devices would mean that it will run on basically from cameras to some um, um, some from camera phones to PCs to mobile phones to gaming consoles to run on a lot of devices. Okay, and that is giving the attribute that Java is platform independent. Java is pop as is popular for its platform independence. Okay, it's developed in such a way that it's not extremely dependent on the platform, making it easy to distribute it across various types of devices. And that is made possible because of what we call the JVM. The JVM. Is right here the JVM. But we're going to look at the JVM a lot later. So um, we're also going to be installing what we call the JDK. That is the Java Development Kit. Of course, you cannot develop with Java if you don't have the development kit for developing with Java, right? Okay, so after installing the JDK, that's what makes the JVM exist on your PC and then the runtime environment and all. That's the environment needed to compile and run Java code. We'll look at that installation then we'll be looking at we'll be understanding what the jvm really is right what the jvm now you know how i mentioned java was um platform independent when we were dealing with the introduction right platform independent the the technology at the center of it is what we call the jvm right the jvm simply means the java virtual machine okay i did not write it out here so the java virtual machine okay so basically, um, how it works, let's look at this illustration. So the way your Java code works is this. If I write a piece of Java code, it would be in a file with the file name extension .java. So that would be this, right? For most programming languages, after you compile, when you compile, you get the, um, the byte code. That is the encode that is closer to the machine representation, and then you run it on the operating system. But Java is a bit different. Java does not run directly on the operating system after compiling and getting your bytecode. It runs on a JVM, Java Virtual Machine. So what does that mean? So a company called Sun Microsystems, they were the initial organization that invented Java. They created a JVM for almost every device. So this bytecode is interpreted by this JVM, not necessarily by Windows, right? So that would mean that this environment, Windows, right? And this environment, Linux, and this environment, Mac, to the Java code is just this JVM. It's just the JVM. So the JVM is an intermediary between the actual operating system and the code. That's what makes Java platform independent, right? It can run independent, independent of the platform. So, so I repeat, this is our Java file, it's a .java file. After I compile, it's a, it's a compiled language by the By compiling, I mean compiling the code you wrote to a, to the machine representation or to bytecode or to machine code. So the bytecode, which is the class file, sometimes called class file in Java, is created. That is the one you execute, you know, to run your app, etc., etc. So it runs on the JVM, making Java independent of the platform it runs on. That's really cool because um, that, that means it could be really easy to build a Java program and run it on Windows, Linux, or Mac without necessarily needing to rewrite your code. That's a good one for a developer, for efficient programming. All right, so I will explain the JVM. 
we can you can also look it up and do a little, a little research on it and read up on it okay then we are going to practically be looking at what we call the java and the java command okay so the java command is used for compiling java code please take note of that for compiling hence the c in front of it while the java command is used for running your already compiled java code then lastly in this particular tutorial we're going to end it by installing what we call the netbeans ide the netbeans ide Net, netbeans is a popular ide ide in this case means integrated development environment that means the environment where we build our environment that helps us build develop and put together our software so netbeans is the ide of choice when it comes to java um of course you can run java code on your pc without and netbeans id we'll find out about that but netbeans will really make it a lot easy if you are building a desktop application or stuff like that all right so let's get into into the practical okay first of all here we are going to install java right so here i have my java installer so this is the jdk let me make this a bit bigger this is my jdk right it's version 8 you could literally download it from the oracle.com website or you could just google download the end jdk right okay so but there will be a link in the description of where to download the jdk the netbeans and if you also choose the notepad plus plus all right notepad plus plus here it's just a software for editing code it's a generic software for editing almost any type of code so before we install netbeans we're going to use it to just run some sample code on our java all right so first of all you install the jdk please install the jdk before the netbeans because the netbeans depends on the jdk all right if there's no java development kit netbeans would not see the runtime environment to execute its files all right so let's install the jdk first of all we run as administrator we right click on as, as administrator say yes so installation starts next next source development environment the tools and so on and so forth all right so it's installing it will be done in a bit okay it said jdk java se development kit that is jdk 8 has been installed and the update has been applied and blah 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 etc etc so it's jdk 8 update 60 it's done so we close this and then now we have a java environment <coughs> now first thing we we'll need to do before we continue is to set the java path variable right to set our java path variable so we go to this pc go to your drive c locate where java was installed program files then java right you notice the jdk 1.8 is here not jerry enter the jdk folder open your bin folder then you see this part name here the location to where the binary files for java is stored you click here and you copy this the reason we are doing, taking this particular step is to be able to run java from command line if you still install netbase without doing this it would work but sometimes you might want to execute java from your command line interface all right in for the huge part of the course that might not be necessary but it's important to understand how the java code runs how the core of the java execution environment runs so i copy this after copying this i go to my system environment variables how do i get there i hit the windows button and i say n environment so i say edit the system environment variables i click this and i click on environment variables okay i select part and i say um i double click part sorry so it takes me here then i say new then i paste control v so my java part is pasted here i click okay okay and okay okay now uh what did i just do you would now notice that if I open my command line, so hit your Windows button, type CMD, right? If I come to my command line, this is it, and I just type Java. If you see a bunch of code that looks like this, it means yes, your system can now compile Java code. And if you also type Java, this is also a good way to troubleshoot and debug a Java installation. So Java, if I see a bunch of code like this here, it means yes, 
my system can run Java code. Remember, the Java command compiles Java code, the Java command runs Java code. All right, let's take an example and compile a simple Java code, then we install our NetBeans and then we can call it a day. All right, work with me. All right, so here we go back to our we go back to our desktop and then the Java virtual machine. Then we open our Java code. Right? We're going to be using Notepad plus plus right now to compile a simple Java code. Alright. So I will run this. I already have Notepad installed, but it's pretty easy. Remember, I'll leave a link in the description for downloading these files. So I would say okay here next agree next and all that and all that create a shortcut on my desktop i already have notepad plus plus installed but you click on install and install notepad plus plus pretty easy and pretty straightforward all right so i'll just cancel this okay so now we have um jdk installed and you've installed notepad plus plus of course it must not be notepad plus plus you could use any editor to edit and then use your command line to compile java code all right so here, I have this folder here. So I will create my first Java file. So first of all, let me launch Notepad. Notepad, Notepad++, plus plus. not Notepad, Notepad++, plus plus. please take note of that. So I launch my Notepad, so I have to close up. Close all this, close all this. All right, so let's um write our, so, for let's, so first of all, let's save the file. So I say file, save as. Right, I take it to my desktop and then the Java, our Java class folder. Then see Java code. I save it here. We'll save it as test dot Java. So I save. So the file name here, as you can see, here is test dot Java. So let's write a simple Java code. Um. So we'll say public class. That's how you start Java code. This is just a simple demo Java code. Test. Now, first, uh, first note in Java. First thing to take note of in Java is that number one, Java is case sensitive. Case sensitive means I cannot write class in capital letter. It will mean the same thing as class, as class in lowercase. Okay? And then also, this file name here, which is called the source file, has to have the same name as this class. They must have the same name. This is not enforced in every programming language, but Java enforces it. So the class name must be the same name as the file. So let's get on with it. So this is my class. My class will be like a box that contains the rest of the code. More on that later. Then I have to write what I call the main method. The main method contains the entry point for the JVM. What does that mean? It means that where the JVM begins when it wants to start running our Java code. So I go public static void main. Open and close this curly brace. So within here is where all my Java code will go. So inside here we go string. Please take no string S in capital letter. Then out. This block brace and here. We will still understand what this means when we treat methods in detail. But this is how the initial structure of our Java code will look like. Now let's we want the Java code to just print out a simple hello world. I mean why not? So to print out output in Java, we use the System dot out dot print or end. Okay, so add the text here. Hello, world. That's it. Okay, let me now explain something. If I go file here and I open the location where this file is, you notice. I wouldn't need this. Okay, you notice that there's a file here called test dot java. A single file but after I compile remember remember what I explained about the byte code the byte code will be created after I compile you will see a, another file called the class file that's the one you feed into the JV right because because you would not ship your actual code if you are building Java code if they already compiled copy that customer or client or whatever development environment are running on needs okay so let's get back to this Okay, so if I compile, it will create the byte code version of this code, right? 
All right, so let's do that. Let's compile. Now, first thing with compiling, because I'm on command line, of course, when we have our netbin inside, we won't have to do this. But think, take note of how this works. So what I'll do is I will just um I will just file, click on file. But the idea now is to go to the location where this file is stored, right? And then run this code. Right? So I can right click here. I will say copy open containing folder in CMD. You see? I click on file and I say open containing folder in CMD. Where is it again? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, okay. So so I right click here. Sorry, no, not file. I right click test Java. And you see open containing folder in CMD. When I click it, I open my CMD, but now I'm in this location. If you check out here, there's a location. User trace desktop Java virtual class blah 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 Java code. So now I can compile this test class. So let's check out something. Let's be looking at this. Let's keep our eye on this while we are compiling. Right? So I'll just this to side by side. So let's compile test Java. Now please take note to compile, use the Java command. I've mentioned that. So I say Java space test dot Java. Remember this location here. This location here before the java command is the same location where i have this file so java test.java if i run this and the compilation works it works notice a new file appears it that's the class file now to run the code use the java command not java anymore java space test remember i told you at the beginning the java command is used for compiling while the java command is used for running the java code when i say java space test without don't add dot java again or dot class Right, then I run it, then I get hello world. It means we've executed our first simple Java line of code. Now, this Java, this Java line of this code here could be, could be a, a GUI and um, a graphic design interface code. It could be anything. It would still work. For example, with Java, if we wanted to use the Swing framework to build a simple user interface frame, please, I know it's a bit above the scope of this course, but just to show you how the Java program works. Let's say we want to want to like build a simple frame in Java, like a simple UI. So I can say import javax.swing.j frame. Right? This is the um, this is the class that's supposed to help us load a frame, like an actual app with buttons and so on and so forth. But this is just a sample. So even if you don't understand this code, just for demonstrational purpose on how to compile simple Java code. So I will say jframe, frame equals to new jframe, right? This is my app, sorry. Then, um, so now I have my frame. I will say frame.setTitle. Let's, let, let's just call the title my app. Then um, I would also say frame. Dot set size and that's the dimension for the size of the frame so we can just say 500 by 500 okay 500 height 500 width now let's also understand that with the netbeast we might not have to write code for graphics user interfaces like this netbeast comes with a designer that helps us do that this is just for the sake of demonstration before we install our netbeast okay so i will also say frame um dot let's say set visible so it will be true this is what makes the frame visible okay now if i wanted to make the frame to exit when i click the close sign i will say set default close operation so this will be j frame dot exit underscore on underscore close so this will enable my frame to close when i click the close button on the app you know what i mean you know it's, it's not every window in an app that closes the frame some just hide it and exposes the one behind it all right let's see how this will work if i have another message we'll correct it so let's go back to our command line and then compile again so java test.java 
Oh, you see, I have an error. So the FR, the arrow should be a small letter. Like I told you, Java is case sensitive. So I think it should give us what we want right now. So I will clear the screen. The CLS command will clear the screen on Windows command line. And then let's do this again. And then now we've compiled successfully. Now let's run the code. When we run it, bam, we have this our app here. We have this our a frame comes up, right? So that's a simple example of how Java works. It's just my app, not so useful. We have to go back and start understanding the Java syntax properly now. Okay, so now having demonstrated this, let us now install our NetBeans, which would make design and developing of Java apps a lot easier. So in my Java installer, I have to install NetBeans right now. I right click this and I run as administrator. So next, accept license terms and conditions. NetBeans will really make it easy to build Java code, especially more complex projects than the ones we just did. So next, uh, personally, it's good you leave the default location, but I have a particular preference for the location where I save my files. So I will browse my system, PC, drive D, Remember, you don't have to do this part. You can just leave the default location. Okay, so this is the thing see already. So let's look at this. Resolution folder is not in. So let's just call it NetBeans 8. 8.2 without the space. All right. So now, or maybe I could just delete the previous one. But let's leave it like this. Seems okay. JDK, see the location of my JDK. Remember, we installed JDK. So NetBeans has identified where the JDK is. With this, we can go next. Okay. We can install GlassFish server as well. Um, GlassFish is a bit beyond the scope of this course as usual. So we just move on. Um, I could also browse and take it to the same location for GlassFish. Mm, install program. So new folder here. Or we could just leave it in default location, no problem. So next, no need to check for updates. I usually like to do that manually. Then install. So the installation starts. So let's let's let you run. Okay, so once the installation completes, you will see this. You could leave this on or you could leave it off. You know one. So when I finish, sure enough, I have a NetBeans IDE on my desktop. So if I run this, it could launch NetBeans. NetBeans is launching right now. So this is NetBeans IDE. All right, so um, your first simple project with NetBeans, you could say file new project, right? Java application, Java is the kind of application you are building. It's not Java web, it's not PHP, it's not any of this. So you select Java application, and when you click next, it will activate the Java Standard Edition. It's activating Java SE, that's the Java Standard Edition. This is my first simple project right so i could call this um whatever i could call it um sample sample project whatever when you finish it launches netbeans all right so um we won't do much here anymore just showing the netbeans in interface so as a recap in this particular tutorial we've looked at we've introduced java explain what the jvm is set up the jdk and wrote some java sample codes all right so stay tuned to the channel for more awesome content on Java application development. The ride is going to get a bit more complex, but it's going to be interesting. All right, do have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you.